Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Roman and I'm a hematologist oncologist and on this video we're going to talk about liver cancer also called hepatocellular carcinoma or hepatoma. They're all the same thing. The goal of this video is to do one thing and that is prepare you. So when you go see your doctor, you know exactly what is going on and what questions you need to ask. So whether you're a patient, a family member, or maybe a, a medical student, a nurse wanting to learn more on hepatocellular carcinoma, I promise you this video will be worth your while. Before we get into it, I want to remind you I am not your doctor. I am not providing medical advice. This is for educational purposes only. Okay, so as the slide says, the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that you do not have metastatic disease. And what I mean by this is, a lot of people think that if you have cancer in the liver, then it's called liver cancer, and that's not always the case. Remember, you may have had lung cancer, and now it's spread to the liver. That's not liver cancer. That's lung cancer that's spread to the liver or breast cancer that spread to the liver. That's not liver cancer. That's breast cancer that spread to the liver. This video is about hepatocellular carcinoma, also called hepatoma, meaning it's a cancer that started in the liver. And that's the most common primary liver cancer. So I want you to make sure, find if you had a biopsy done, find it and make sure that it says hepatocellular carcinoma or hepatoma. Because if you have metastatic disease from, from another cancer to the liver, then none of this pertains to you. Just want to make sure you keep that in mind. This talk is about hepatocellular carcinoma or hepatoma. The first question you need to ask your doctor, do I have hepatoma or hepatocellular carcinoma? It's the same disease. Okay, very important point. Okay, so if you have hepatocellular carcinoma, we're going to go over risk factors, then treatment. I mean, we're going to go over everything. So starting off with risk factors, alcohol, obesity, diabetes, smoking. That's right. Smoking can increase your risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. NASH, also called uh, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, and hepatitis C virus and hepatitis B virus. If you have any of these or th if you have multiple of them, then that increases your risk even further. Now, in the United States, this cancer is not as common, although I do see it, but it is very common worldwide, especially in, in Southeast Asia and in Sub-Saharan Africa. So if you've been diagnosed with a hepatocellular carcinoma, the first thing we're going to want to do is to find out, is it advanced and how advanced is it within the liver? Okay, and for this, you're probably going to have either a CT scan or an MRI scan with contrast. And this will tell us how advanced is this liver cancer, especially within the liver. We're going to want to do laboratory tests. Your CBC, we just want to know how your blood counts are. The complete metabolic panel, this will tell us about your liver enzymes, your kidney function, your electrolytes. We're also going to want to check your PT and your INR. The reason for this is uh, these will tell us how your liver is functioning, how your kidney function is, and overall, how strong are you? Uh, you know, how good are, is your organ function in order to tolerate the treatment options that we are going to recommend? Also, there's a tumor marker. It's called alpha fetoprotein. Now, there's a few things that I want you to know about alpha fetoprotein. Number one, it's a blood test. It's a cheap blood test, and it's not a specific blood test. The first thing is most hepatomas or most hepatocellular carcinomas produce alpha fetoproteins, but not all do. Some patients do not have elevated alpha fetoproteins, so it's not 100% reliable. Number two, some people or some patients may have very high alpha fetoprotein levels, some may be borderline high. So, you know, you got to really be careful with an alpha fetal protein level. But the most important thing to keep in mind is that other things, other cancers can also produce alpha fetal protein. So just always keep that in mind. The other thing is your doctor may recommend a biopsy. Uh, there's several ways of doing a biopsy. The most, uh, the easiest of which is usually with a needle. They go in, they find your mass and they go in with a needle and they obtain a piece of tissue. So I'm assuming if you're watching this video, they either think you have a hepatoma or they've confirmed it with a biopsy. Now, just keep in mind, sometimes 
An MRI or a CAT scan can give a picture of the liver mass, your, the, the mass you have, that the radiologist, the ones reading the film, can say, you know what, this looks identical to a hepatoma. This looks like a hepatocellular carcinoma. Remember, I'm using hepatoma and hepatocellular carcinoma interchangeably because it's the same illness. So, um, you know, if the radiologist says, wow, this really looks, and, and you'll get your radiology report if you have it, find it, and the MRI or the CT scan, the doctor will say, you know what, this is highly suggestive of a hepatocellular carcinoma. And if your alpha fetal protein, this blood test is high, usually greater than 400, then that combination is extremely suggestive or highly suggestive of a hepatoma. And sometimes your doctor may say, you know what, we don't even need a biopsy because this pretty much solidifies or tells us that this is a hepatocellular carcinoma. Now I can tell you, as time goes on, most of us now still push for a biopsy because nothing will really replace a biopsy. There's nothing like an actual piece of tissue telling us, yes, this confirms a hepatoma by tissue. One of the reasons that we may not want to do a biopsy is because of the fear of bleeding, the fear of an infection, which is very, very rare, but it can happen. And also, there's also the fear that if you go in there and you biopsy, you can spread the cancer. And I can tell you from um, you know studies that we have that the risk of spreading the cancer from a biopsy is extremely rare. So it's really not a reason not to do a biopsy. So the last thing I want to go over on this slide here is your liver function. If you think about it, if you have a liver cancer, you have a hepatoma or hepatocellular carcinoma, we want to know how good is your liver. Some patients, for example, with this, a risk factor is cirrhosis. If you have underlying chronic liver disease or liver cirrhosis, you're at risk for developing a hepatoma. And the question is, how good is your liver function? Some people have cirrhosis, but their liver is very, it's still functioning fairly well. Some people, unfortunately, have end stage liver disease. And we want to know this. And for this, we usually use something that's called the child Pew score. You can get online on whatever search engine you want. And it's, it's using your blood test and you punch in the numbers and it'll tell you if you're a child Pew score A, B or C. So A means your, your liver is pretty good. Your liver is functioning fairly well. B means you're so-so and a child Pew score C means that your liver is unfortunately pretty deteriorated. And this is important because we will use this child Pew score to decide on what treatment we are going to recommend. All right, so before we get into treatment, I just want to briefly ask for a like, subscribe, leave a comment. Guys, remember the easiest way for a patient to find this video is by YouTube pushing it up on the algorithm and it does so by your like. So if you find this video useful, please consider hitting that like button. All right, so the nitty gritty, what you need to know, this is by far the most important slide and that is the treatment slide. So if you have a very early hepatocellular carcinoma, then by far the, the best treatment is surgery. So the surgeon is going to want to go in there and take it out. So if you have good liver function, for example, your child Pew score, see now you know what the child Pew score is. If it's an A, they can probably go in there and take it out if it is not uh, too large or, you know, if it's not just, if it has not spread to another part of the body. Now, I also want you to ask your doctor about a possible liver transplant. So are you a surgical candidate? That's the first question. And number two, are you a candidate for a liver transplant? And this would, in some cases, have two reasons to do it. So number one, let's say you're a patient with liver cirrhosis, okay? If, they, if you get a liver transplant, that will treat your liver cirrhosis. And number two, if you have the cancer in the liver and they take it out and they give you a new liver, you're also treating the liver cancer. So it's kind of, you're treating a double whammy here. Now, the reasons for, you know, a liver transplant is more complicated, of course, because number one, you need a donor. So you need to be put on a donor list. Uh, number two, usually, these are guidelines that we follow. You have to have one lesion in the liver. So your, your hepatocellular carcinoma has to be one less than five centimeters or three or less lesions that are uh, together are less than three centimeters. 
Again, sometimes the surgeons, you know, they will make exceptions if you're, you know, depending the case, but these are just some guidelines. So less than five centimeters, one lesion, or less than three centimeters, that together they're very small lesions, and that you do not have lymph uh, vascular invasion. So in other words, that the cancer is not invading a major blood vessel. So the first question, again, recap, ask your doctor, are you a surgical candidate? Can they take it out? What about a liver transplant? Would that be another option? So if the answer is yes, you're a surgical candidate, then go to surgery. Now, the other question, if you're not a surgical candidate or you're not resectable, so for example, let's say you have several lesions or it is invading a blood vessel or maybe you're just physically unfit to undergo a major surgery, then we have these other options, okay? And then, for example, one of them is chemotherapy embolization. We can also do radiofrequency ablation where we, you know, we, we burn or we freeze the tumor. We go in there with catheters. We can burn it. We can freeze it several different ways. Radiation is another option. There's another treatment option called Y90. You know, if you ask your doctor, so just to put it on to perspective. First question, doc, am I resectable? Yes or no? What about a liver transplant? If they tell you yes, then go. If they tell you no, you're not a surgical candidate, okay, then what about these local options like chemotherapy embolization, radiofrequency ablation, where we burn, we freeze, radiation, Y90, you know, it really depends. Some institutions prefer one over the other. It really is operator dependent. So ask your doctor as a second option, if you're not a surgical candidate, one of these. Okay, now moving on to advanced disease. So if your doctor tells you that you're not a candidate for surgery and or you're not a candidate for a transplant or you're not a candidate for local therapies like the ones I went over, the radiation, the radiofrequency ablation, the Y90, et cetera, because your cancer has spread outside of the liver or maybe it is just too advanced within the liver, then these are the options for you here. For this, you're gonna see the hematologist oncologist. For example, this is what I do. And we can offer many different options. I just want you to know that there are many different options here for you. There are different options and there are different combinations. Sometimes we combine some of these so that we have an increased uh, benefit. And we have chemotherapy options, immunotherapy options. For example, atezolizumab together with bevacizumab. This is just a combination of an immunotherapy with another drug that's called a vascular endothelial growth factor um, drug, where in, in conjunction or together, they really try to shrink your tumor and improve your quality of life. There's also immunotherapy options like these here, uh, where, you know, what these drugs try to do is that they increase your immune system to attack the cancer cells. Sometimes they work very well. Sometimes they don't work as well. And we take into consideration what is your liver function what is your, your, your expectations, how good you look. I mean, are you a strong patient that can tolerate some aggressive treatment or maybe you're, you're you know, a little more debilitated and you're not gonna tolerate something more aggressive. Then we also have uh, these oral pills, which also have their unique set of side effects and unique set of uh, risks and benefit that we take into account. So what I want you to know is that if your disease is advanced, we have many options here that we can offer you depending on how strong you look. Um, what, what do you prefer? Do you prefer something in the vein? Do you prefer something oral? And we'll start you on a treatment. If it's working, we continue it. Let's say you don't tolerate it, okay? For example, maybe you bled or you just, you're not feeling well on the medication. Or let's say the medication stopped working. The liver cancer started to grow back. Then in that case, we'll switch you to one of the other combinations. And then we'll have you on that for a period of time. And if it stops working, you don't tolerate it, then we switch you to another one. And that's the way we manage a patient with more advanced disease. Now, what about screening? This is for a patient, for example, if you're a person with high risk. So let's say a patient with liver cirrhosis. If you're a patient who has hepatitis B or has hepatitis C, then we can try to look to see if you develop this cancer to try to, de to try to detect it as early as possible. And this is what's called screening. So we usually do a liver ultrasound and an alpha fetal protein. 
And what we do is we try to find, you know, if your alpha fetoprotein is high, then that's a clue as to maybe you have one of these cancers developing in your body. And of course, a liver ultrasound, if we see a mass that's growing in your liver, then that will prompt uh, a workup to look for a potential hepatocellular carcinoma. And these are usually done every six months. Every doctor is a little different, but just know, ask your doctor if you have liver cirrhosis or hepatitis B and C, are you a candidate for screening for this cancer? Now, how do you prevent it? The best thing is not to get it in the first place. Number one, don't drink, don't smoke, maintain a healthy weight, because remember the NASH or the, the obesity is another risk factor. Receiving the hepatitis B vaccine, you do not want to get hepatitis B virus. And if you have hepatitis C, there's very good treatment options now for hepatitis C. So make sure you see your hepatologist, your liver doctor, to have your hepatitis C treated. All right, that's it. You made it. So remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you on one of my other cancer-related videos.